Hey there, welcome back to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll be talking all about watering pepper plants. So by far, some of the most common questions we get about growing peppers are around the topic of watering. How often should you be watering your pepper plants? Should you be watering deeply every week or should you water lightly three times a week? And I wish there were a really simple answer to how often to water pepper plants, but unfortunately there just isn't. And the answer is basically it depends on a lot of different factors. So in this video, I'll discuss watering peppers from an early stage like these seedlings here and these adolescent plants all the way through to fruiting plants, full size peppers that you have outside and what differences you may encounter. But first, check out our ebook, Growing Perfect Peppers. It's all about growing peppers from seed to harvest. It shows our entire detailed process and all the techniques we use to grow amazing pepper plants every year. We definitely touch on the subject of watering in the book, some of the do's and the don'ts of watering. So if you're interested, check it out in the description below. But first, let me just give a really quick summary of watering peppers in case you just want a quick answer. How should I water my pepper plants? Well, you should check the soil, use your finger just to see if it is moist down below the surface, go at least an inch down, but if you're outdoors in a larger pot or in the ground, go down two or three inches to see if that soil is moist. And if it's moist, your plants probably don't need water. Another great tip for potted plants is to check the weight of the pot and get used to the weight when it's watered and see what the weight of the pot is when it's thirsty. And over time, you'll know right away upon picking up the pot whether or not it needs water. And keep in mind that a larger plant is gonna drink more water than a smaller plant. Hot conditions will cause more water usage as well as wind and keep an eye on the rainfall in your area. Try to keep the watering even, so that means regular watering, but not overwatering or underwatering. You don't want the plants to begin drooping, but you also don't wanna drown the root system and risk root rot and other major issues that can happen from overwatering. Okay, so let's go through watering at the different plant stages of growing peppers. We'll start with seedling stages and indoor plants. Both of these are good examples of plants that are still indoors. And then we'll talk about a fully mature plant like this one here. Although this is a small one, you can imagine a much larger plant that is outside, fully mature and producing fruits. So at the seedling stage and indoor plants like these two here, we typically bottom water. So we're watering at the bottom of a tray like this one. You'll just open up a space and fill it with some water and the water is sucked up from the bottom, basically moistening all of that soil from the bottom up. Now for seedlings, it's pretty easy. You can know when to water based on the weight of the soil. There's a huge difference in the weight of your pots, whether they're watered or unwatered. And when they start to become light, that's typically a good sign that you need to water the plants. If you don't want to bottom water, you think it takes too much time, you can top water. Just be careful not to damage really young pepper plants. The stems can be somewhat fragile. So just make sure you water at the base of the plant, right at the root system. The most important thing at these stages is to not over water. You wouldn't want to put too much water into your tray and let the plants sit in about an inch of water because then the water will just sit there and there is the risk of root rot. It's not very likely in a peat-based soil like these are but it's never good to let your roots sit in an inch of water at the bottom. Those roots are not gonna be happy. They can't get the oxygen that they want, so only the roots above the water are going to be able to get oxygen, and those bottom roots can begin rotting or breaking down. So just to give a ballpark of how often we're watering, seedlings that are in these six cell trays typically get watered every two to three days, and keep in mind that we have fans going which evaporate some of the water once these seedlings move into these three and a half inch pots, we're watering a little bit less at the start, but once they get large like this plant is, they're needing water a lot more frequently. These plants need water every two to three days again. But it becomes a little more complicated when you bring your plants outdoors, and then they have to deal with higher temperatures, with wind, and all of those factors. Okay, so now let's talk about the common factors that determine watering needs for your pepper plants. I think temperature is probably the most important factor to pay attention to because higher temperatures directly correlate to higher water usage from pepper plants and other plants as well. So when it's really hot, your pepper plants are going to use a lot of water. There's a process called transpiration that occurs where the leaves essentially sweat out water that is available to them in order to cool themselves down. So on those days when it's 90 degrees, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, your pepper plants are going to be using a lot of water. And if you have them in pots, you're probably gonna be watering those plants every single day if you're using a traditional potting mix. So keep that in mind, again, especially with potted plants. And now I wanna talk about that potted plants versus in ground. Potted plants typically need more watering than plants that are in raised beds 
or are especially plants that are in the ground. And there are two possible reasons for this, but the first is definitely the soil that you'll use. Usually for potted plants, you're buying some sort of potting soil, which is based on peat moss and perlite and vermiculite, all of which are very light materials that allow a lot of airflow through the root system, which is great for your plants, but it also means that the water can evaporate more quickly and that leads to more frequent watering. The other is that the root system is constrained to a smaller space, meaning that the roots don't have that long reach deep into the ground where they can access water when the surface soil has dried out. They only have the water that is available to them in this small confined space, and therefore, once that's used up, you need to replenish it or the plant's gonna suffer. So that's why we don't grow all of our plants in big pots because the watering demands are just overwhelming in the midsummer. In-ground plants are just so much easier, so much more resilient, and thankfully we do get a lot of rainfall, which means our in-ground plants almost never need watering. So why not talk about rainfall now? Of course, you're gonna to have to pay attention to the weather. Has it rained recently? Or are you going through a drought? Do you live in a dry area where rain doesn't occur very often? I really like relying on rain and we're lucky enough to have a lot of rain here in New England. But regardless, I really recommend collecting rainwater and using rainwater to water your plants if that's an option. Another environmental factor is wind. Again, it's sort of the same effect of high temperature. If you have a really windy day or a stretch of wind or you live in a place where wind is just common, that's gonna rob the plants of some water, both from evaporation in the soil and transpiration through the leaves. And lastly is drainage, which affects both potted plants, like we talked about, and also in-ground plants. Your ground soil may not drain the same way that your neighbor's ground soil drains, and it can be really beneficial to perform a drainage test in your yard, where you essentially dig a big hole, fill it with water, and watch how quickly the water drains through. And that will give you a good picture of how much watering you're gonna to need to do. If your soil is really high in sand, then it's gonna drain a lot more quickly. And if it's higher in clay, it's gonna drain less quickly and you won't have to water as much. Okay, so with all these factors to look out for, what can you actually do to know when your peppers need water? Well, the most important thing you can do is just be observant. If your plants are thirsty, they're definitely gonna show you that they need water. And if they've had too much water, they'll also show you some negative effects. So let's talk through those now. Okay, let's start with a plant that is very dehydrated. The plant will droop its leaves. The leaves will sort of become limp and you can feel just by touching the leaves, they don't feel quite as firm or springy. They'll just sort of have a limp texture to them and eventually you'll see it happening where the leaves are just kind of falling downward. And in that case, of course, just water the plant right away. They need water badly. And in just about a half an hour or so, the plant should spring right back to life. And that is the case with a severely dried out plant, but you don't really wanna wait until that's the case. You should water before that happens. And so to know that your plant is dried out enough to water, you can just feel the soil. I like to dig down maybe an inch for a small plant like this, but outside you can dig down two or three inches and feel for moisture. Another option is to use a moisture probe, which you stick into the soil around the base of your plant. And that measures the water level, but I really don't think it's a very effective method. We do have one and we use it sparingly, but I wouldn't really rely on it for knowing when your plants need water. Now for overwatered plants, there are different effects you might look out for, such as curling leaves, sort of a bubbling curling leaf, drooping leaves as well. I know that's confusing because drooping leaves happen for a dehydrated plant, but if your leaves are drooping, and the plant is clearly not dehydrated, then it may be from overwatering. And then in severe cases, you might have yellowing leaves and dropping leaves off of the plant. All of these mean that you need to let the plant use the water that's there, give it some time. A pepper plant will always prefer to be overly dry than overly wet, so keep that in mind. One other symptom of improper watering is blossom end rot. And people typically correlate blossom end rot with a calcium deficiency, but that's usually not the case. There's usually plenty of calcium in your soil, whether it's ground soil or potting mix. But if you're watering improperly, the calcium can't reach the fruits as they're developing and it causes sort of blackening on the end of your peppers, especially on larger varieties like bell peppers and other big sweet peppers. So essentially what can cause blossom end rot is allowing your plants to completely dehydrate and then flooding them with lots and lots of water and just following a regimen like that for watering instead of doing a more even watering. So what I recommend is that you water regularly, more frequently, but with less water. So it's better to water your pepper plants with a half a gallon of water three times a week 
than it is to just drown your pepper plants once a week with five gallons of water. And there are more than one reason for that. Not only the chances of blossom end rot, but also that when you heavily water a potted plant or even plants in raised beds, it can wash out nutrients from the soil. This is especially true of water soluble nutrients like nitrogen. So you're leaching out those nutrients away from the plants and then you're gonna to have to replenish it by top dressing or fertilizing again. Okay, so now let's go through some quick tips for watering pepper plants. Our number one tip for sure is to mulch your pepper plants and other plants. It doesn't make too much of an impact on potted plants, but it's a great idea to mulch your plants that are in raised beds or especially in ground. Not only does it keep the weeds suppressed, but it also retains moisture in the surface of the soil and prevents that evaporation that we were talking about, especially on windy days and when the plants are in hot weather. We like to use straw, but you can also use wood chips or leaf mulch or even grass clippings. Another tip is to water at the base of the plants. Try not to water over the surface of your leaves. It's never great to have your leaves saturated with water any longer than they need to be. And everyone always says, oh, well, what happens when it rains? Yes, the plants do get wet, but if you're controlling the water, it's always better to water at the base of the plant. The plant's leaves don't need water. That's not how the plants absorb water. So put the water where it's needed, right at the base of the stem. Another tip is to use an irrigation system of some sort. This makes it a lot easier to schedule out your watering and have that more even watering that I was talking about. Using a hose timer, you can consistently water your plants. It can go on for a set period of time, allowing the plants to get just a bit of water on a regular schedule. And there are two common ways to deliver the water. One is a soaker hose. These are really cheap and you sort of just string a hose around the base of all of your plants. And every time you turn on the faucet, that hose leaches water out wherever it's laid. The drawbacks are they don't last very long, especially if they're just getting beaten with sunlight all the time, and that there's excess water coming out of the hose where it's not needed in those in-between spots between the plants. The other option is a drip irrigation where essentially you have a probe that you stick at the base of the plant and they make different widths of those probes so that larger plants can get more water and smaller plants can get less water, sort of solving all of the problems with the soaker hose. But it is definitely more laborious to set up and more expensive. And lastly, try to keep your plants cool on those really hot days, especially potted plants where it's very easy to do so. You can just move them into the shade around 2 p.m. when it's gonna be 100 degrees Fahrenheit and then put them back out once the weather cools back off. It's a bit more tricky with in-ground plants or raised bed plants, but it is possible to provide some sort of shade using a shade cloth or other larger plants. You can position your raised beds in a location where that will happen naturally. Okay, so that about sums it up. I know that was a lot of information about watering. So I hope this video helped you understand how to water your pepper plants effectively. If you have any techniques that work well for you growing peppers, let us know in the comments below. And a few more Patreon shout outs for our patrons. Thank you, Jesse P, Tom M, Hunter W, Kimberly A, Jenny C, Robert B, Dave C, Rita, Kelly B, JT, Chris D, and Sean M. I feel like all those last names ended with an E sort of sound. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining our Patreon. It's been a lot of fun so far showing our progress. This is actually one of our Patreon plants and we're showing how to grow plants from start to finish and sort of growing along with you. So thank you for joining. And if you'd like to join, check out the link down below. And thanks for watching Pepper Geek. I'll see you next time.